That's for sure. How did you get to it? I want to press, see if I can see it. Uh, the, the Vatikim list said that you were telling your story. Oh, holy cow, that's terrific. In really? English, I wondered, Hebrew or English? I'm not doing anything on it. They know me. <laughs> I know your story too, but I want to hear it. Oh, no, I'm not going to. It's in Hebrew. I'm not going to go through it. Do what and you have to do. I'll be quiet. Yeah, you do that. And uh, Hello. I haven't seen him in a lot of That lady. Yes. Chaya. Yeah, me. Yeah, he's in Yerushalayim. The last time I saw him in Yerushalayim was you. Right, there. right. And you left us, Tiffany. You left us. Did I leave you? Yeah, you went back to your home. You I didn't did. stay in Yerushalayim. It was, uh, yes, yes, you're right. Axel, Axel, are you really right? But it's good to see you both. Hi, hey, back here. here. Huh? Can, can he see, see other people? I don't know what it is he wants. They all know this and they all know me. <coughs> Chaya? Yeah. Chaya, where are you? I want to see you. I'm at the top, but it ha only has my name. Yeah, I only yeah, see your name. That. But you, Chaim saw me waving, right, Chaim? Yes. yes. <laughs> Looks good to me. Stown. Stown. Oh, Stown is awesome. Come on, cut it. Thanks, Nephew. <laughs> and Levy? Yeah. <coughs> yes. <coughs> Where did you all come from? Stout. Okay, all okay came from me. Okay. This we've read this, we've talked to the young brothers. Talk to Chaya. Okay. Chaya, what you do afterwards after we spoke? Hello, Chaya. Yeah, okay. Maybe what's I'm, noon? I'm on, and I I'm okay. So I got your I got your email, so I'll, I'll uh, just I'll, click I'll, and then it'll be uh, pretty automatic. Okay. Bye. Thanks so much. Bye. Who's that? My brother, Bernard. Really? Is he coming too? Ooh. Yeah. Levy may know him. Probably. Yeah, Bernard. Sure. Sure. Where is he? Uh, in the in Manhattan. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> what's new? What's new in the Bronx? I'm in. Yeah, Riverdale, the Bronx. Riverdale is the Bronx. You can't deny it. I I I'm proud of it. Good. Good. You know Bernie Horowitz? Sure. He's a wonderful Balcore. Yes, yes. Send my regards, right. Unfortunately, his cousin here died of Corona. Yes, too. I heard, I heard. Oh, yeah. We're in the sh same shul. Uh-huh, okay. Yeah. Are you in shul? Now, no. Where are you home now? No, no. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm in my house. My house. You, you yes, can't just yes, see the bed over the there? Now. <laughs> I asked if you're in show. That, is your show open for business? Oh, well, on Zoom a lot. We do classes. We do learning, all sorts of things. And are there minyanim in the shul? No, the, the shul is closed. Okay. Physically. As here. As here. What? Yeah, and he's sipping. I'm sipping. Oh, yeah. Uh, there they are. This is Levi and Hani. Right. Right. Hi. Hello, Hani. Hi, Hani. Hello. 
You look good, Sippy. Hi, Sippy. We're all there in the, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I am Mark Swell. I don't see a picture. Huh. Okay. Hi, doesn't, I doesn't have what the shape of the with no picture. You have, you have to press it. Oh, I yeah. have to press it? Yeah, not with the finger. Where? <laughs> with this? Yeah. I have to press it here? Yeah. Aya, do you want to turn on your video or not? I. How do I do it? I, am, I think on the bottom camera. left of the screen, there'll be a picture of a video camera. And if you click on that, it should start your oh, video. Okay, here we go. Thank see. you. No, it's uh, still got the line through it. Whoops. There's Chaya. Okay, Chaya. Yeah, hello. Uh, hello. Hi. <laughs> this is so wonderful. It was so great. The, uh, you know, I went like this and not like this. Where's the video screen? You can always go into video at some point if you want. What's a video? Where's the video screen? So they all get upset when they don't see you in the beginning. So, so on. Yeah. Nadine? Nadine from where? Really? All right. You want to go into video? Start video? Yeah. Where is this? Hello. Hello. Wow. Hi. Is nice. <laughs> We're close, you don't have to yell. Professor, are you working? He just came. Here, here, here. What? Are you working? Am I working? Yeah. Always. Always. Uh -huh. We're not allowed to go to campus. But uh, other than that, Everything's on Zoom and everything else is on the computer. So, uh, we can do this on other days as well. How come you're in the country? We'll come around. Why? Yeah. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> Most often I hear that you're not here. No, you don't. Uh, not, not for the last time. Last time. Question is what's going to be next year? I was supposed to go, we're going to go on sabbatical next spring, but uh, I don't know what will be. Who knows? So. I don't think that there's another. How, more, how much longer can this be? Okay. Is that Khani? Yes, it's Khani. Facing us. Okay. In the middle. Okay. All right. Well, we 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 are here. I'm going to turn the video off because we're going to sit down and eat while you're running this meeting. So uh, yeah, every so, minute counts. So we will we will hear, but we'll we will turn the video off, off for a few minutes and we'll come back. But we're we're here. I have no idea. So There's my brother. There he is. I haven't seen him in a long time. Oh, where did everybody come from? So the table put in front of us over there. The side. I asked you. Are you Dick? Are you turning it off? New York, right? Okay. Mickey. Mickey, you're going to turn it off for a minute to get back to because you're not on. Where's the rest of the Butter and that's it. I don't want to do this. Wait, I lost them. I'm not sure. Whoa. What happened? I don't know. Wow. This is marvelous, you know, we can go go do a whole big long thing. Sippy, all we're missing is your mother's cheesecake. My mother's cheesecake, yes, we all are. Yum, if you want to go to the house, I can give you some, but I don't know if it's a thing. Yeah. Oh, what you doing? Yeah. I don't, I don't know what? Just give me what I have there. Am I have audio too? Where? Where to? Oh. What happened to, to her? To uh, you? No, to no, just the one thing we're talking about. I'm having it with you. Yeah. Nadine, where did she get to? Yeah. Now, eight o'clock. And that's where the kid is going to sleep, mm -hmm. huh? Okay, Mickey's going to come around. I didn't know that he was going to. Prime. No, it's a It's a prime. Hmm. So where is it? Everybody's sitting here. Or those who want to. You're not. 
stem. This stem. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see stem. Yeah, I see. I see. Yeah, there he is. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's stem over here. Is that him? Mm -hmm. You can't tell. Yeah, it's down. It said. Uh, you can turn off the audio, then you don't hear anything. No, you can mute. Mute mm -hmm. is stuff. You can't. Is it Inter? Do we know how to do this thing? <laughs> I think, what, Mickey's not showing up? <laughs> That's what it looks like. Where is he? <laughs> there. Starting? Yeah, I see people we know. Do we have his daughter? Is he at the end? I don't know. That's my name here. Is that Mark on the top there? Is it Is it D? Mm -hmm. That's how you miss it. Yeah, that's a lot of flowers. That is not E D. No. Where is he? Hello, Shalom. Hi. What is what? זה גלבוע. מי זה? גלבוע, בן של רחל. איזה רחל? בדודה שלך. מה? רחל בוע? רחל, רחל. מי זה רחל? רחל. איך הגעת להנה? אמא שלי נתנה לי את הקישור. נו. איזה יופי. והבאתי את הבת שלי, את מאיה. היי. צריך לעשות כזה דבר כדי שאנחנו נוכל לראות אחד את השני. זה הרעיון. This is really... This is a bit chemistry. Everybody's... I don't have to... I'm eating now. רגע, מאיפה צריך? מפה אני צריך לדבר? מה נשמע אצלכם? I don't know where I am. I'm here. So, Mike will be ready in two minutes. Okay. I don't know, Oli. Oli. Evelyn. Want to see you? No. No, it's not. How do I get to him? How? How do you do that? Him? Him? He's a bad sugar. 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 אני הבן הקטן שהייתה חלווי. אני לא רואה איזה דברים. אני ביי. Okay. Levy Roth Club. Yes. Uh, Bernie Harwood sends his best. Okay. okay. Send it back. Thank you. I, I said Tell that. Tell me somebody, how can I send it back? Michael Harwood is on. Eh? That's what they called him? No, Michael Harwood. 
it might be Bernie Horowitz's brother. Oh, oh. Horowitz, we spoke about it today already. What was his name? I don't know. Yes, you did. We were talking. We don't want to interfere with the the program. I don't understand. I want somebody to know how I can talk to him. We hear you. But I want to talk to him. Oh, there Robert, he is. Over here. You. Ah, I see. They hear you talking. Alone? What? Do you want to talk to him alone? We want us to uh, no, blank no, out no, here? No, no, no. no. All right. I'm just happy that he came. I didn't think that he would. How did he get here? That's what I wanted to know. What do you mean, how did he get here? <laughs> He's in his house. He lives in the country. But how did he know that it was my house? That was nice. But I don't know. <laughs> Mickey gave them the address. Mickey told him. Mickey, uh -huh. Mickey invited all these people with us to sit with you tonight for the program. Okay? Okay, yeah. good. That's me. No, That's your daughter. Yes, I know. I hear that. Well, uh, hello, Yapa. Hiya. Where uh -huh. is this? Oh, hi, Yapa. <laughs> Yapa. <laughs> hi, everybody. Very confusing. Yes, it is. Hi, Yapa. It's confusing, but it's also very uh, magnificent, um, magical. Yes, it is. It really is. It's a... No wonder I was surprised. I didn't know how you got there. Yeah. Hello, so, hi, hello, Sippy. Hello. Hello. Oh, nice I'm from London. <laughs> from London? Hi. That's from my cousin. Uh, I don't see you. Who? Hi, hi. It's Elisa. I hear you saying hi, Chaim, but I don't see you. Ah, where are you? She's not on yet. On I'm the, on. On, look not at on the frame. Uh, Zippy, look around the top of the frame. I am. It's only, oh, there she is. There ah. she is. There. Hi. Hi. It's extraordinary. Why is your son not coming this summer when he was supposed to? I know. They canceled it because of COVID. Uh-huh. Very sad. The world is very sad at the moment. We are we're all in the same thing. Exactly. Where is he going to school next year? Um, he's at a high school here called UCS. And Jamie is in McGill in Canada. Good school. Uh -huh. McGill. Yes. And here's Adrian. Hello? Yes. No. Oh, That's why I asked. See? Oh, and I can see Chaim there too. How are you? Oh, you can? Oh, yeah. You can see us. Where are you seeing us? Hi. 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 Hello. Hi. Where are they? Okay. Let's get in. I want to talk to him also, but I can't yeah. find him. Who? <laughs> Well, Libby, we came to hear your story. You when does yeah. the story no. begin? What? We came to hear your story. When does it begin? I don't know. I wasn't the one to... I didn't even know that you were supposed to be here. You mean we're not invited? No wonder there's no chief. Everybody was invited yeah. by Nikki. Does anybody so want to call Nikki and ask him what's going on? Call him and ask him. No, he's, he's, in the, he's in the middle of logging in right now. Oh, okay. That's what I meant. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay. So this is, Lord, the, this is the first time I have never been in anything like this before. So. To make a Shekhi It's, uh, <laughs> it's three continents. No, three. Not three, three continents. No. <laughs> the United States. Who is that? North, okay, North America. One, Someone should have told me it was going to be Jewish time. Uh, yeah, that's what it's supposed to be. It's about another five minutes. Not, not here. Imagine what it would be like if you had to be in the it's Jewish house. time, each one of you has a different Jewish time. Upstairs, do not bother me. 
There we are. Any, any questions for Mickey, Michael? Yes, I think people here have to be Hebrew. No, that's not, not Tippy. No, no, English, English. English, English. English? <laughs> English, English. Okay. Hey, Mickey. Hi, Mickey. Hi, Chaya. Hi. Hi, Mr. and Mrs. Stown. Olin. Hello. How are you doing? How's, how's it going in Oklahoma? It's starting to get hot. Other things will slow down a little bit. Welcome to Israel. Hey, hi, Lisa. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Hi. Hi, how are you doing? Oh, it's good. It looks like we know most of the people here, so this is going to be a little different than what I anticipated. It's lovely. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm going to do it in here. Uh, yes, you're right. Ah. <laughs> you recognize. Wow. I haven't seen you in a long, long time. Yeah. I think uh, 20 years at least. Yeah. Uh, Ola and Joanne, I just want to introduce you to a core of my mother's closest friends. Also some relatives, cousins, from my father's side, from my mother's side. And there's one guy in a yellow shirt that's a little bit bald. I don't know who he is, but I guess we'll let him stay. He's our next door neighbor. Uh, you all know Yafa, my sister. Uh, Yafa, wave hi. And my, my parents' oldest granddaughter, Ruth, the one that's smiling with the glasses and waving now. Um, I could, just with this picture in front of me, probably tell stories for a month. <laughs> there are stories about each and every one of you, uh, not only in my mother's life, but in my life as well. And uh, it's like a eerie cross-section of, of uh, hey Nadine, hey Hazen, how you doing? Uh, oh wow, your beard got white. <laughs> wow. Um, I no, usually no, do this you much just, more. You just have something personally. with your glasses that makes it look that way. Oh, uh, okay, fine. Yeah, the camera puts on 20 pounds, I know. That's right. Um, it also takes my hair away. Well, yours, yours is not exactly black either. So. <laughs> Um, so I'm going to do this a little differently than I usually do. We did this three times already today in Hebrew uh, for children and friends here in Israel. Hey, Mickey. Yes. Yeah, she has to know also what we're doing here. Who's she? What's the name? Uh, Which she? Edith. Edith? I don't know. Uh, Gilboa understands Hebrew. I speak English as well. This is my daughter. Ruth understands English. What's your name? Maya. I think Professor Rathoff understands English. I don't care with English. I have to ask. Okay. Who doesn't with English. It's okay. 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 Miki, this is my daughter. No, wow, I thought it was your wife. No, no, she's my, she's my oldest daughter. Uh, I have two more kids, son and uh, another daughter. And what's her name? What her name? About you. She's Maya. Eyal. The Noah. Oh, I have a Noah too. Yeah. <laughs> my oldest, my oldest daughter is Noah. My, my youngest. You okay. Now you don't know what I know. Okay. What's and this, that? everybody's gonna enjoy hearing this. Olin, Joanne, this is gonna be like revelation. Oh, I got the tithing on. We have a, palaka, a, a matzah cover for Pesach. Yes. And it was made by a great great grandmother somewhere way in the past, in the 1880s. And we didn't really know who this person was because my mother calls her Babiko. Can you send this to me? That's it. That's her name. Just like you and I called our great grandmother Noid Mama. Yes. And yeah. they called people Aggie yeah, right. and all kinds of nicknames. Yes. Yeah. So who's Babiko? Well, I'm not 100% yeah. sure. I don't know. I said and it to then you. my wife, for my father's 80th birthday, oh, yeah. began to put together a family tree. 
By the way, my wife is the one that says Ilana Jaffe over there with the blue shirt. And familiar. it turns out that you and I both decided to use a name that we didn't even know. Noid Mama's mother was Noah. Wow. Your great grandmother. This is the first time I, I hear it. I know. I only found out four years ago because of Ilana. Wow. So, so we have a, 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 a Pesach Matzah cover, and you and I both decided to name daughters Noah, not even knowing that. Yes. Now, if Amazing. my ex wife found out yeah. that it was in memory of my great great grandmother, yeah. she would change the name. Well, I have a Pesach. So that's a different yeah. name. This is meeting. Isn't it? This is the meeting okay. number. Okay, okay, let's go on. Okay, so let's go on. Let's let's start. Yeah, okay. We're gonna mute everybody and we'll tell you how it works. If you want to say something, if you need to say something, use the space bar on your keyboard. Your space bar on your keyboard is like a like a um, walkie-talkie. It will allow you to speak yes. temporarily as long as you're holding down the space bar. Okay? Interrupt whenever you feel that you need to interrupt. I'll leave plenty of time for questions at the end. And if you need to ask my mother a question in the middle, please don't hesitate to do it. Host disabled. Ilana, you have to make me a host. Yeah, no, I can't share my screen. No, I signed it as me. I did? Okay. There we go. Okay, can everybody see the screen? Anybody who can't see the screen, raise your hand. This is a story that I'm going to translate from a book that was published a few years ago in Kfaharoe about my mother's doll. And it tells the story of the family, my mother and my uncle, through the eyes of the doll. And I found that it's a lot easier to tell the story and hear the story through the eyes of the doll than it is if I was telling it extemporaneously. Now to the kids this afternoon and this morning, I only read certain parts of the book because they don't have the patience to hear the whole thing. In this case, I'm actually gonna read the book as closely as I can in English in order to give you the full gist of the story. Obviously, this is just a tiny glimpse into everything that happened to my mom and to Moishi, my uncle, during that period of time. Uh, but we're talking about approximately a 10-year period of time, from approximately 1942 all the way till 1952 and till today. Ima, if you need to say something, please say it. I think everybody can hear it in the Hebrew. No, 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 no. Number one, if they can hear it in Hebrew. Number two, if I'm not mistaken, everybody has, knows almost the whole story. Okay. So, during I waited the good all day to have it in English. Okay. During the good days. Who wanted it all in English? During the good days, okay. when Ima would take care We don't hear you. We don't hear you. We still don't hear you. Start again. Thank you. We can't During hear you. During the good days, when Ima would take care of Moishi the baby, and Grandma Berta would be cooking in the kitchen, Saba Avraham would announce, we're going out for a walk. 
Under Corona, this is a pretty cool thing that we're going out for a walk. Sippy would quickly put on her red shoes and hold me in her other hand. She'd jump up and sit on Saba Avraham's lap and together we would wait while he, while he tied her shoes. My white shoes did not have to be tied because they were always on my feet. Saba also put on shoes, but they were strange. They were brown, they were full, they did not have any shoelaces, and they didn't have a buckle, and they'd get all the way up to his ankles. And meet, suddenly, Saba would take, take Yafa's hand, uh, take Tsipi's hand, and she would grab me, and together, the three of us would go out into the street. During the good days, we would walk on the sidewalk, the big sidewalks of Budapest, the city in which we lived. Budapest is the capital of Hungary, and in those days had many, many, many Jews. During the good days, I would go with Tibet Knesset with my two Sabas, Saba Tzvi and Saba Avraham. Of course, I couldn't go alone. Tsipi would have to carry me. I sat down behind them on the bench, once on Saba Avraham's lap and once on Saba Tzvi's lap and sometimes on Tsipi's lap. The most, the moment in the tefillah that I loved the most, the moment in the prayer that I loved the most was when Saba Avraham who was a Kohen, would get up and go up to the Bima in front of the Ark when with two other men who were also Kohanim. Saba would stand on a big carpet, put his, he put his talit over his head, put his hands out straight, and Sipi and I would be under the talit with Saba Tzvi. Sipi would whisper to me, be quiet. Don't make much noise and don't look at Saba Avram's hands. I would try to peek because I wanted to see what was going on under there. Saba, Tzvi went, Saba Avraham went from side to side saying the special prayer of Birkat Koanim, the special prayer of Aaron, the Aaronic blessing. Saba Avraham said every single word deliberately. We heard every single syllable of every word. It felt like he was trying to reach every single one in the room and make sure he transmitted God's blessing. In Sippy's hand, sorry, missed it. In Sippy's hand, there was always a coin, especially a time of candle lighting. Safta would light the candles of Shabbat or of Chad, and Sippy would put the coin in the Karen Kayemet box, the blue box that stood next to the candles. We all know that as we drive through Israel today, all the beautiful trees that we see, whether they're up in the Galil or down in the Negev, all the trees we see were bought and planted out of the little coins that Tsipi and Moishi and their friends put in these little boxes. Safta would say the tefillah, would say the blessing, and add a very simple, a very special sentence. May it be his will, that we return soon in our day, our whole family and your whole people of Israel to the land of Israel and to a united and built Jerusalem. When, when Safta said the normal prayers, Moishi, Abba and Saba would say, Amen. But to this prayer, they said, Amen, Ken Yehiratzon, Amen, 
May it be so. And then my favorite moment of the week came. Saba, Abba, Safta, Ima would all give us a kiss on the head. Moishi got a kiss from everyone on the head. Sippy got a kiss from anybody on the head. And I got a kiss on everybody with it on the head. I was part of the family. Just before the really bad days began, Abba gave me, Abba gave me to Tzipi. I was a gift that Abba said Tzipi would have somebody for me to play with, somebody to me to talk to. Every little girl at two and a half, three years old needs a doll. And I was Tzipi's doll. As you can see, I was part of the family. Tzipi is holding me. And Sippy's mommy, who many people know as Iran or Mrs. Winter, is holding little baby Moishi. One of Safta, one of Mom Ima. This is very confusing for me. Sorry, all the Saftas and Imas and Sippies. Um, the lady holding Moishi is Sippy's mommy, who we know as Irene or Mrs. Winter. And the lady standing next, sitting next to her, if I'm not mistaken, is a cousin. Correct, Ima? Yes. Okay. We all, when the, when the bad days came, Abba, Abba was no longer home. He only came home once in a while. The truth was that the Hungarian army decided that he has to come to work for them and he rarely came home. The people you see in this picture were the ones who lived together. That's me, and the girl that I'm holding, that's holding me, is Tzipi. The little boy in the front with the golden curls is middle Moishi, and he's sitting on his mommy's lap, Irene or Mrs. Winter. Behind us are our great, our grandmother, Berta, our grandfather, Avram the Kohen, and I think that that is Aunt, that is Aunt uh, Ilonka? Yeah. Yes. That's Clary, Aunt Ilana. Yes, this is uh, Ilana. Ilonka and Clary. That's yes. Ilonka and Clary, my mother's two cousins. My grandmother. Uh-huh, that's right. Saba Tzvi who I'm named for, is in this picture. He lived alone, and he rarely, rarely got out of his chair. He was very worried about his son, our Abba. And we would go visit him whenever we could. When Abba came home those few times, we would run to Sabbat Svi to go visit. Abba would give his Abba me and Moishi and Tzipi, big hugs and kisses. Abba's hugs felt exactly like the same types of hugs Tzipi gives me. In those few hours, I would sit on the mantle. I would watch Saba's horribly torn and colorless shoes, his colorless and torn clothes, and wonder how could he be able to do such hard work in the snow and the free and the frost wearing those clothes. After Sab Abba would leave, Sipi would take me and put me on her lap, and she would whisper in my ear. Abba had to go again. He was taken together with lots of other Jews to do very hard work for the German army. Don't cry. He had to go. Ima says that he'll be back soon. The war will be over and everybody will be together again. I would look at Sipi and say, with my voiceless voice, why was Abba so skinny? Don't they give him anything to eat? Where does he go? Why does he have to be there? Why can't he be here with us? Sipi, as if she had heard my words, would stroke my hair and say, my little doll, I can't talk about it now. 
Can't you see that Ima is upset? During the bad times, we were afraid that German soldiers and Hungarian soldiers would hurt us Jews, and we hardly ever left the house. During the bad days, all the Jews had to live together in one neighborhood, and it was called a ghetto. During the bad days, all the Jews had to wear a star, a yellow star on our coats when we went outside. For us, it wasn't really so bad because Saba Tzvi and Saba Avraham and Safta Berta's apartments were inside the ghetto. So we were able to actually live at home. One time, Saba Avraham took us out for a small walk, but it wasn't a good one, not like the old days. The ghetto was surrounded by, by, by barbed wire. The great playground was outside the ghetto, on the other side of the wire. Even the man who sold roasted nuts, roasted chestnuts, was nowhere to be found. And of course, everybody wore their yellow star that said Jew. During the sad days, there was one very, very sad one. Ima wasn't even home. Two soldiers came in to the house without asking permission. They were wearing dark uniforms, wearing black boots high up until their knees. They stood in front of the, at the door and tapped their knees together. It made a sound as if it was two pieces of metal being knocked against each other. I got scared and I shoved my face into Tsippy's chest. I was so happy that Tsippy held me tight. Her heart was beating very quickly and I was hoping she could calm me down. Mr. and Mrs. Königsberg, one of the soldiers said to Saba and Safta, you must come with us right now. Where? said Safta. No questions, said the other soldier. We'll take you where we take all the Jews. Tippy didn't move. And I was thinking, what's going to happen if I have to stay here alone? I was afraid the soldiers would take Tippy. And they've already taken Ima and Moishi who were out in the street. And what would they do with me? Just leave me here on the mantle? All of a sudden, Clary, Safta's sister, Ima, uh, sis, uh, Ima's sister, came into the house. She was shocked and scared by the soldiers, but she stood up tall and looked at them and said, listen, I'm young, I'm pretty, Take me instead. The soldier picked up the piece of paper and said, it says, Avram and Berta Königsberg, and those who I'm, are who I'm taking, said the soldier. And he pushed Saba with his ba a mallet. So just put my name in instead, said Clary. Nobody's going to know. Again, I'm pretty, I'm young. I could work a lot better than they can. I said, no, said the soldier, and slapped her in the face. Clary fell down because of the strength of the slap and we banged her head against the wall. Saba Avraham, white as a sheet, asked her to leave the room, but Clary did not accept that. She stood tall in front of the two soldiers and said, please, my father's old. He doesn't feel very well. Just take me instead. You need to bring somebody, take me. Enough, said the soldier and slapped her again. This time, slamming his boot into the ground. Saba looked very, very weak and fell down into his chair. Safta moved over to help him. The, the soldier threatened her and put up his stick and said, if she moves, he will hit her too. 
Sipi and I were standing this entire time in front of the door and watching this. Safta in pain and Clary, who was pacing the room, unsettled. Finally, the two soldiers talked to each other and said, Mr. Konigsberg, if you don't come right now, we're going to take you by force. Saba got up from the, chair, from the chair, went over to get his coat, I took out of, Safta took a kerchief out of the drawer, put it around her head, and both of them started going to the door. Clary stood in the door in front of them and said, you're not going anywhere. The soldiers are gonna take me. And if it's not good enough, you could come by later and take my parents too, but you're not taking Saba and Safta. This time the soldier said yes for some reason. The second soldier grabbed her by the arm and said, come now, before we change our mind. And off they went. Saba Abraham had a moment to still grab his daughter and give her a kiss on the cheek. Safta was able to give her her kerchief. Clary gave a winking smile at me and at Sipi, and then left with the two soldiers. During the sad days, Safta Berta tried to cook for us. She tried to make hot meals with the small bit of food that we had. Saba Avraham would stand next to the window and look out to the sky. Used to be able to go out of the ghetto once a day for about two hours. But Ima would go out during the daytime when Sipi was at kindergarten. Ima would pick Moishi up, hug him in her, in her arms, and say to Safta, I'm going out. Maybe now I could find some potatoes that I could make some food out of. Safta would say, it's dangerous, Sipi. You can't, you can't go out now. They could catch you. Ima would say, their ch chance of, the chance of finding food in the daytime is much better before everybody else gets there. Then, stroking Moishi's head, she would say, besides, who'd believe this cute little blonde, blonde haired kid was Jewish? What I noticed was, from my perch on the, on the mantle, was that when Ima picked up Moishi, she used him and covered the yellow star. Ima was able to bring three potatoes and a small cabbage. Safta was extremely happy. If she was able to bring a little bit of flour or a little bit of sugar, it was an entire party. Sometimes Ima would even be able to bring home a single egg. And then we had a, a, a meal fit for kings. Again, during this time of not being able to get eggs before Pesach, it gives us a little bit of an insight into how lucky we still are, even though we're stuck at home. Ima asked Sipi to keep an eye on Moishi, who was asleep. Sipi put me on the, Sipi put me next to the window and got on a little stool. Together, both of us looked through the windows at the ghetto street. It was easy to see Safta and Ima walking amongst the people on the street because our Ima was the prettiest one on the street. And it was very easy to see her because she didn't walk, she didn't walk uh, bent over. She walked with her head tall and her shoulders back and straight. This time, Ima was able to get an entire loaf of bread and an onion. Safta carefully sliced the bread, put a little bit of oil on each piece, cut up the onion, and put little pieces of onion on each piece of bread. Interestingly enough, this was the meal that Sipi liked the best. She thought this was a treat, better than a milky. And just before she went to sleep, she would say, whisper in my ear, it is much nicer to go to sleep 
there's something in your stomach than having your stomach growling all the time. During the sad days, Sipi went to a kindergarten that was put up by the Jews in the ghetto. And every day I waited for her until she came back in the afternoon. At this time, we were also able to adopt the two boys that you see in this picture holding CP up. Both of them were orphans from the yeshiva. They no longer had parents and they became like our big brothers for CP, for Moishi, and for me. And then the days of real fear arrived. Jews were being collected and sent out from the ghetto. We had no idea where they were going. We just knew they were not coming back. Everybody was afraid for their life. But there were good people too. A man by the name of Karl Lutz, who was a deputy consul of the Swiss delegation in Budapest, decided he could not allow this to go on. Lutz got a building and rented it. It was called the Glass House. And he put the Swiss flag on top of the house, believing that if the Swiss flag was on the house, none of the Hungarian Milos or Black Cross would be able to come in and do harm. The line in front of the, black house, in front of the glass house was long. People wanted to get in. Together with a man from the Mizrahi movement in Hungary by the name of Moshe Kraus, the two of them began producing documents called a Schutzpass. This document said that anyone that held it was a Swiss, was under Swiss protection and that it was the Swiss government who would guarantee that this Jew would not stay in Hungary. The line got longer as the word of the Schutzpass got out. 30,000 people got the first set of documents. By the time the war was over, 64,000, 64 Jews were saved by the efforts of Karl Lutz and Moshe Kraus. One day, sorry, this is a tough part. One of the worst days, Ima picked Sippy up and whispered a very, very sad secret. Ima held Sippy very, very long and very, very tight. And suddenly Sippy asked, where? And Ima answered, I don't know. Sipi asked, when? And Ima answered, I don't know. Sipi asked, how do you know? And Ima told her that a friend of Abba's was able to escape from the workforces, came back to the ghetto, and came to tell her that he heard that Abba couldn't hand, hold on any longer with the harsh conditions, and he was no longer. I understood that Sipi, Moishi, and I no longer had an Abba. In those days, Ima heard that the soldiers were going from house to house collecting the Jewish children. She also heard that the Red Cross had set up a protected kindergarten. So in the morning, she put Moishi in a wood crate, in a, yes, in a wood crate, and she took Sippy and me to this Red Cross kindergarten. She believed that this is where we would be safe. A nurse in white clothing received us there. I didn't like this woman from the first time I saw her. There were lots of Jewish children in the room. Some of them 
were crying because they were ripped away from their parents. Some of them were crying because their parents came and left. Sipi and I were crying because our mommy brought us here and we knew she had to leave. Before she left, Ima turned to me and whispered in my ear, but loud enough for Tsipi to hear too. I'm very, very thankful to you and grateful to you for staying here with Tsipi. Tell her, please, after I leave, that we don't have any choices. This is probably the best way to protect you. Ima gave me a kiss on the head. She hugged Tsipi again and then gently took her hand took Tsipi's hand off her skirt and left. Tsipi sat down on the blanket she had brought with her and I sat on Tsipi. Suddenly, one of the two of the nurses came over and said, come with us. And they gave us a thin mattress surrounded by lots and lots of hundred mattresses and they said, you sleep here. The next morning, we got a piece of bread for breakfast with a tiny bit of oil on it. Sipi, as she always did, made sure that I got a few pieces too. And she fed me very, very slowly. We were bored all day long. There was nothing to do. We were, there was absolutely nothing to do. And then suddenly, in the afternoon, Ima came. I promised I'd come to visit, she said, and she sat next to us on our mattress and we talked. Ima then put her hand in her pocket and took out three tiny bits of chocolate. And she said, CP, put your hand out. And she showed CP three pieces of chocolate. One sweet piece of chocolate is from Saba. The second piece comes with a kiss from Safta. And this little piece comes with tremendous longing from baby Moishi. I suggest, said Ima, that you eat the chocolate after I leave. And that way, you'll have a few more moments of sweetness. A bell went off and all the parents that came had to leave. Sipi, feeling the chocolate in her, put the chocolate in her pocket and said to me, you know what? We should really keep these. We'll eat them a little bit at a time before we go to sleep. She kept the chocolates in her pocket and we started to lay down. One of the nurses walked over to us and said, give me the chocolate right now. But it's chocolate that my mommy gave me said Sipi, and she held the strong in her pocket. Give me the chocolate now, said the nurse. Everybody here eats the same. We can't let you have something the others don't have. But it's ours, said Sipi, and held me tight. Ima promised. Now I started yelling. I yelled that these were gifts of longing. Of course, all the kids here were longing for, for home. I suggested that we split some of the chocolate with another kid or two, but I was a doll. Nobody could hear me. And the nurse didn't give in. She pushed her hand into Tsipi's pocket, pulled out the pieces of chocolate and said, go to the kitchen. Now, I've known Sippy for over two years now. And I was shocked to find out that Chippy took my hand and went to the dining room. I was sure Sippy would sit down and not move because Sippy, when she was told to do things that way, didn't usually react well. I was sure that she would be so angry that she wouldn't even agree to eat. But Sippy apparently had other ideas. She went into the dining room with me. She sat down at the table. She ate the little bit of porridge that was in the plate. And of course, 
as always, she gave me some of the leftovers at the end. The two pieces of bread that we got, she looked around and then she hid them in her pocket, got up and said in my ear, we are not staying in this place. Four and a half year old Sipi ran to her mattress, picked up her blanket, walked to the door, and we were out. It was dark. There was nobody in the street. I was terrified. Not only was we out, but we were outside the ghetto. Sippy, all four and a half years of her, walked straight, knew where she was going, and we reached the covered market. Hey, even I recognized the covered market because in the good days, Saba Avraham would take us here to do shopping. We'd get our food and our vegetables and our fruits here in this market. Sipi continued to walk with confidence and then said to me, do you remember where the roasted almond guy stands? Behind the roasted almond guy, there's a door and that door goes to our house. But it's dark now. We shouldn't go looking for it. There are no lights. Why don't we just lie down here and go to sleep? And when we get up in the morning, we'll walk home. Sipi found a crate near the vendor that sells the roasted almonds. She curled up with her blanket close to the wall. And I, I hugged her as tight as I could so that she, I, I would, so she would not be scared. Sippy fell asleep right away. I stayed guard and only fell asleep when it got light. In the morning, a Hungarian boy woke us, woke, woke us up. Get up, he said to Sippy. I'll take you home. Sippy recognized this boy and gave her a hand, gave him her hand. The boy picked up the blanket and started to walk with us. There he is. There's the guy who sells the roasted walnut, or the roasted chestnuts, said Sipi. And there's the gate behind him. That's the way home. But the boy didn't pay attention and started walking in a different direction. No, no, you're wrong, said Sipi, and stood fast. The way home is from there. Enough, said the boy. But that's the way, said Sipi. That's the way home. Come, I'll show you. She pulled him and pulled him, and finally he decided to go her way. As we walked out the door, the ghetto and the street that we lived on were right there in front of us, just up the road. Sipi and I started to run, and the boy was right behind us. Finally, he caught up to us. How did you know, kid? You're only four and a half. How do you know the way home? He asked with, and he picked Sipi up in his, and me in his hands. Oh, I know from my Saba. He used to go through the, he used to go through this gate and through that door to buy roasted uh, almonds. Who's us? Said the boy. Us, me and her. You mean the doll? What do you mean the doll? Me and her. Yes, of course. Sippy raised me up high and said, it's our grandfather. What don't you understand here? We got home. Ima and Safta hugged us. Ima thanked profusely the boy who brought us home. Sippy gave Safta the two pieces of bread that she took from dinner the day before and said, I took these for you. He turned to Saba Avraham, who sat down on his chair and put me on his lap. Safta joined Saba, and only then I heard Ima telling, this, telling a story to the boy. Saba put me down on the table so that he could hug Tsipi, so I was close enough to hear. In the morning, Early, early, Ima went to visit us 
at the Red Cross Center and heard that the Hungarian soldiers, the Red, the Black Cross, came at night and took all the children. I was so scared, she said. I ran to Zippy's mattress and her blanket wasn't there. I turned to the nurse and she said, I didn't see her. The girl didn't sleep here last night. I thought you took her home. You obviously understand the terror I was in. And then I went out and I saw you. I remember that you were in class with my sister, Clary. So I asked you for your help. I really, really, really appreciate the fact that you were willing to help a little Jewish girl. I cannot thank you enough. The embarrassed boy put his head down and started to walk out the door. Ima stopped him. Let me ask you a question. Do you know where the other children are? The little boy, the boy looked down. He took a look at Saba. He took a look at Safta. He took a look at Sipi. He took a look at Moishi. And he took a look at me. And then he whispered, I'm sorry, ma'am, but there are no more children. They killed them all. Ima turned white. She tossed me across the room and grabbed onto something so she shouldn't fall down. After a few seconds, she got up, took out a tissue, wiped her face, wiped her eyes, pinched her cheeks to get some color back, and looked at me, trying to smile. I knew what she was saying. I knew she could trust me not to tell anybody this horrible secret. Not Saba, not Safta, and definitely not Siti. When the bad time was over, the Allied armies were able to free Hungary from the Germans and from the Hungarians who helped them kill the Jews. The ghetto gates were took it, taken down. The ghetto barbed wire was taken down. Ima took Moishi and Sipi, took me, and together with Saba and Safta, we went out for a walk, and we even were able to go to the park across the way. The children's kindergarten was opened again. Tipi again said good boy, goodbye to me every morning and went off happily to Nan. I sat here all day waiting for her to come back. Skinny Jews with a very, very sad look on their face slowly swarmed back into town from wherever camps they were able to survive. Most of them found no one at home. A few of them found a brother, a sister, a cousin. We got amazing news. Clary, the, the, the aunt that saved Saba Avram and Safta Berta was still alive. Safta Berta and Saba Avram started to smile again as soon as they heard that. And then the best, greatest day arrived. One day, which started as a regular day, I was sitting on my mantle, waiting for Tsipi to come home from Gan, as I did every day. That day suddenly turned absolutely wonderful. I heard Ima telling Safta and Saba a breathless story. I was walking in the street, and suddenly I heard a familiar voice calling me, Iren, Iren. I stopped. I thought I was hearing things. So I kept walking. And then again, I heard, Iren, Iren. I turned around and I saw somebody running towards me. I thought, this can't be. It can't be. But, and I fainted. Yep, she fainted right into my arms, said, said Abba, and started laughing. Ima started laughing. Saba started laughing. Safta started laughing. And then baby Moishi started laughing. We hadn't heard laughter in the house in a long time. 
but I didn't laugh. I was worried about Sippy. I was just hoping that the shock of and and the and the and the happiness would not be and the surprise would not be too much for her. That afternoon of that wonderful day, Tzipi came back. She stood in the doorway and saw Abba kneeling nervously. Abba put his arms out and waited for Tzipi to run to him like she always used to do. During the good days, but Sipi wasn't sure. She looked deeply into his eyes. She looked at his shoes. She looked at his clothes. She looked at his face. She looked carefully and closely at everything, and then at his arms. She looked again straight in his eyes. Neither of them were blinking. Is that you? And Abba said, yes, it's me. Aren't you dead? Abba said, no. Baruch Hashem, thank God, I'm alive. It was very, very hard. I hardly made it out, but it's me, Abba. And, and what about the friend who... The friend made a mistake. Total silence. Abba stretches his arms out again, yearning for his daughter to come and hug him. Suddenly, a shriek filled the room. Abba! Zippy ran to Abba, who grabbed her, hugged her, and started to kiss her. I wasn't jealous. I wasn't jealous that Abba spent the next two weeks with Sippy and Moishi. Sippy and Moishi spent the entire time only with him. I was left on the mantle as if I didn't exist, but I wasn't jealous. This was great. The new time arrives. Sippy. Moishi, from parents, Saba Avram, Safta Berta, and Doda Klari, leave Hungary and head to the displaced persons camp in Germany. What you see in front of you right now is the actual Schutzbus. This is the actual document that Ima in this story, which uh, most of us know as Eden or Safta, Vin Safta Happy or Happy or Mrs. Winter. Um, she got this in, 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 and it says her husband's name, Winter Laszlo. She received this in 1944. And this gave her, her family permission to go to the displaced persons camp. The story of how they got there, what happened there and so on is for a different day. Saba Vesafta, Klari, Klari Tchatna Bamachane, Hiu Baala, Vesaba Vesafta, Lule Eretzis. Oh, sorry, I'm reading in Hebrew. Klari got married in the camp, and she and her husband, Saba and Safta, moved to Israel. We waited for a, a we waited for permission to go to the United States, where South, where Abba had uncles. In the meantime, as you know, we had adopted some boys and we took care of them too. Sippy started to go to the Tarbut school because Jews, the first thing they did once they were free was get good clothes to wear and reopen the school. None of us walked around in rags and even I got a new dress. Sippy was very good in school and as you could see from her report card from Kita Aleph, from first grade, it comes from the Directory for Education and Culture of the Remnant of the Diaspora in Germany. And it's from 1948. Yeah. Time in the camps was good. As you can see, 
I was always with Sipi. In every picture that you see of Sipi, I am always there. I went with her to the United States. I went with her to Canada. I went with her to Texas. And I moved with her every single time we moved. And finally, when we moved to Kfaharoe, she found a place for me, and I didn't see the light of day for the next 40 years. We reached America. As many of you know, we joined Bnei Akiva and Moshava. We made many friends. We did well in school. And our Abba and Ima, Latsi and Irin, became very popular people in the community. We also have to remember that not all of us made it. Our family was very, very lucky. I counted everybody and almost everybody made it out. Today, there's a memorial that explains in a museum the story of Carl Lutz and Moshe Kraus. And at that memorial on the wall is our cousin Yudit. Our cousin Yudit, on the last day of the war, was running around as a teenager wearing a, a Hungarian army uniform giving out schutzpasses, trying to find more Jews to save. She, together with other teenagers, were caught practically on the last day and killed on the spot. But the rest of us, the rest of us made it to America and made it to Israel. Me and Sipi, we've been together 78 years and we hope to be together for many more. We got married, our friends got married, we got older, Moishi had a bar mitzvah, and mommy was able to go visit Haifa and see her parents almost every single year. She also worked very hard. This is the kitchen in Moshavai and Jalat. Some people might recognize, not in Jalat, where? Yeah, Gillette. That's Gillette. Yeah. Okay. And they now live in Israel. They have children, grandchildren, great grandchildren. The picture that you see, the little boy smiling on the bottom, is the last grandchild in my my parents in Sippy's family, and the little baby that Noah is holding, that's Noah is Sippy's first great-grandchild. The entire family, Moishi and Toby's family, Moishi and Sippy's family, are now close to 50 people, all of whom live in Israel, build kibbutzim and moshavim, serve in the army, work in agriculture, teaching, economy, and help build the state. I get it. <laughs> And that is the story of Tsipi and Moishi, my two friends who I grew up with and I'm proud to represent in a museum today. I hope that being in the museum will help other children who will read the book that they wrote about me and tell this story for many, many years to come. For the adults here, I want to recommend two books. Not a good one. one book is the story of Karl Lutz, who rescued 62,000 Hungarian Jews. And it tells the political story, how he did it, why he did it. The other book came out very recently by Karl Lutz's stepdaughter. Her name is also Agnes. She comes from a Jewish mother. And after the war, Karl went back to Hungary to find her brought her to Switzerland and raised him there as her own. There's a very interesting story in, in uh, Switzerland. They have a strange law. A tomb in Switzerland is only kept for 25 years. After 25 years, they erase the person that was there, they redig it, and they reuse it. Only very special 
heroes of the nation, elected officials and others are allowed to remain after their 25 years. For 24 years after Karl Lutz died, and he was, he was recognized as one of the first Hasideu Mot Olam, the Swiss government told him that if anybody tells his story, if everybody, anybody knows who he is, if anybody gives him awards, they will take his pension away. Because we don't do things like that. We don't break rules. So for the rest of his life, he had to sit and do the jobs, the low level jobs that they gave to a man that should have been a glamorous ambassador or more. Wow. Only after his death, 24 years later, his stepdaughter was able to convince the Swiss government to recognize him as a hero of the nation, to move his tomb over to the, to the row of heroes so that his memory and his story could be told forever. Ilana, Natan, and I were the first children of survivors of Karl Lutz to go and visit his tomb and to be able to say, Kel Malar Achamim, Yiskor, and thank you to this brave man. Today, people are telling his story. There are museums, there are exhibits, there are books. But I really recommend you read both these books about the Under Swiss Protections tells the stories of different people who he saved. One of them, the story of Moishi and Toby Winter. I thank you all for joining us. I'll leave you here if you want to ask questions of my mom. And you can continue to talk. Ilana will open the, uh, the microphones. So please try to talk one at a time. Uh, if you put your, your screen on a speaker view, you'll be able to see who is speaking at that particular moment. And that way you could also avoid talking on top of each other. Before we start, Ima, do you want to say something? Thank you. I'm happy for everybody to come. It's Ima, happy. talk to the camera. Oh, I can't really. Though. Right there. I'm very happy to see everybody. And I'm happy they're all here. And let's see what else is there. I'm really happy that you all came. And I'm very surprised that you all came, including, what's his name? <laughs> <laughs> well, which one? one? My, my grandfather, my, what are you, your grand, grandchild, no? <laughs> your old, Ima, your oldest grandchild is here. Your youngest grandchild is here. The mother of your oldest great grandchild is here. Um, right, that's Renan, uh, that's Ortal down at the bottom. Levi Rothkopf is here with his wife. <laughs> Wait, wait. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Gilad, remember yeah. Aviv and Gilboa? Uh -huh. My daughter. We used to see Gilad, uh -huh. Aviv and Gilboa every Purim at Noid Mama's house. Yes. To, to celebrate her birthday. Yes, I remember that. Uh, Abba's cousin, Lisa from London, is here. Uh, my surrogate parents from New York, Michael and Susan Horowitz, are here. You have to thank them for taking care of me and tolerating me for all those years. Mm -hmm. uh, you let it still in the draw. Canada. Uh, <laughs> Our neighbor was... from Canada, from Toronto. Um, Naftali is here. Um, we have friends from Texas. Mm -hmm. Hi. From Oklahoma. Hi, Olin. Oh, wow. Miss Ann, how are you doing? Well, people who I've met over the years and have become very, 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 very close friends. They've actually met my mom and they've heard her tell the story in person. Um, Mira is a cousin of Ilana's, my wife from, from Philadelphia. Nadine is from Kaharoe, friends, younger friends from Kaharoe. On the camera, you also see Yafa. My sister, and I think that's Rotem behind her. <laughs> it's Adia. Yafa, it's Adia. And then Halel also, Halel and Tuvia. And on the bottom, I don't know if it's on the bottom or the top for you, 
are Hillel and Hallel and Tuvia. Hallel is Moishi's granddaughter. Mm. Looks like Tuvia Bala. She's Moishi's granddaughter, <laughs> and the guy behind her is her husband. <laughs> Last but not least is my mother's sister, one of her two sisters, Chaya, in New York. And we hope she's doing well. And we hope that you're staying at home and not going out. And we'll miss you very much. That's right. Where are you? Everybody. <laughs> yeah. It was wonderful. It was very moving. A beautiful book, beautifully told. And um, I'm happy that I was able to be here for this day. Thank you. I just feel it that it's, I can't get my thing around this that I can't see you all at the one, all at once. And that everybody's going somewhere else and I can't to learn to do this. <laughs> I have to learn to do this. And I hope you'll come again so that we can do it again. <laughs> not, not with this, but something else. We can do something yes. nice. Yes. Yeah. And it's really, it's wonderful. I can't even... I don't know, this was very, uh, what's the word? It was very, uh, I didn't know that this was coming for me. So this was very, very nice. Mm -hmm. so it was a very, very nice surprise. And it was very special. I'm very happy to see this, this, uh, oh, this, the book. All the little kids can see it because uh, I think it's important for them to, to look at and to see it, that's it. That's what I can do. Up, up, up. Yeah. Else, I wish I could see you all get together and we can do something. I don't know. I don't know how this, where this goes. Yeah, you have on the, on the right, on the top, on the right, you have, yes, there are some teacher ribuim ktanim. אם את מזיזה את העכבר על המסך? יש לי סעף, אוקיי, נו. את רואה למעלה מימין, יש לך תשע ריבועים קטנים מיוחדים, אחד ליד השני. אם תלחצי עליו, תוכלי לראות את כולם בבת אחת. באמת? אז רגע. תשע ריבועים. איך לעשות את זה? אחד, שתיים. אני שפושת? את כולם בבת אחת. The you mean you will be over here? Yeah, I mean, 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 and to yeah. have such a, you know, to, to be able to place it in, in the time frame and, and yeah, as yeah. you grew up, et cetera, is fabulous. I did, you knew. Can I talk to you? Can I talk? Yeah. No, I'm just very surprised and very happy that many of my friends have come and that all of you are coming. But I have to get myself uh, I don't know, I have to see all of you, but I have to learn how to do this. <laughs> <laughs> to be independent. <laughs> it's very special, and Mickey, thank you so much for telling the story. It's so mm -hmm. great to see you guys. And um, Sippy and Chaim, we wish you uh, good health. We wish you safety, and uh, lots and lots of love from my parents in Florida. I hope we'll see you many times. Well, now that you know that we can see you on this. Exactly. <laughs> you must use this. Just machot. Just machot. Zippy, we want to tell you also, we are very excited about the story. We are very excited about the story. The truth is that we have this book in our house. We are holding it in our house. Oh, that's right. You had to have it, all of you. And it was just amazing to hear the story, even though they were reading it, and it was amazing. באמת. לפני חודשיים אנחנו היינו בבודפסט, רגע אחד לפני תחילת הקורונה, ואנחנו נחפש את כל המקומות האלה שהייתם, שהוזכרו. כן, אתם, אתם, אתם הלכתם לראות את זה? כן, אנחנו, אנחנו, רק אני ואשתי ועוד חברים, 
שדרך אגב, אם היום בצהריים הם נכנסו לשמוע את הסיפור גם כן. כן, בסדר. אני הייתי שמחה מאוד אם אנחנו היינו נמצא אחד את השני באיזשהו שלב. אני גם אשמח מאוד. באמת. סיפור נורא מרגש. אימא שלך היא לא נמצאת עכשיו, נכון? היא לא באה. לא, לא, היא לא פה עכשיו. זה אצלנו בבית בקורנית. היא יודעת שאתם באתם? כן, כן, אני, אני חושב, היא שלחה לי את הקישור, אז אני יודע. Oh, she didn't tell me. אוקיי. Okay. I'll take you on it. אני רוצה להגיד לך, כי חייבים. עד ש... אנחנו כבר, uh, you know, very, very סבתא? כן. אוהבים אתכם. ואיפה? אני לא יודעת מי הולך ומי נשאר. אורטל? איפה את? אורטל? אני? את לא רואה אותי? כן. אז הנה שלום, אורטל. אני לא רואה, זה לא עובר לי. סבתא, את רואה אותי? כן, אני רואה אותך. את רואה אותך? את, את, כן, את... אני רואה אתכם. Okay, טוב. לילה טוב. לילה טוב. It meant a lot to us that you all came. And I know that it meant a lot to my, my parents. And Mickey and, uh, and Ilana, thank you very, very much for this. It's really, really, really special for all of us. And we should meet in Smachot. Nachon. Love you all. Thank you. Thank you, Oma. Smachot is happy days. Events such as weddings and bar mitzvahs and and children being born. And oh. that's how we say goodbye uh, when we're in sad days. We should meet under fantastic conditions Amen. and not under sad conditions. Amen. And the rest of the Bible Amen. battle that's going Amen. on in Hebrew is basically family stuff, because a lot of these people haven't seen each other in a long, <laughs> long time, even before Corona. <laughs> All right. Well, too, I see a question. תודה. Thank you. Anyway, hey, stay well, and what an honor to be with you today. Really? To hear the book. Yeah. Ima, somebody from Oklahoma wants to say something. Oh. Okay. Who's from Oklahoma? I have a couple. Uh, did you record this? And when is the book going to be out in English? Uh, yes, this was recorded. We, we haven't yet learned how to put it out there. We'll, we'll try after this to put this, to make it available so you could show it to the kids. Uh, and the rest of the crew. Um, uh, and the book, uh, God willing, will be done before the National Holocaust Memorial Day, the, uh, the International Day in January, which is also my mother's birthday. So God willing, the book will be out beforehand. The moment people like you, Olin, Anne, and so on, obviously you'll get uh, early copies even before it's published. I'll send you pictures and so on what it looks like. Our friends in Spindale, North Carolina, and in, uh, in right. New Mexico, right. in Taos, New Mexico, are helping us put out the book. Thank That you. sounds great. Looking forward to it. And uh, really appreciate you including us in this. And we look forward maybe next year in Jerusalem. Amen. Amen. Thank you. We'll leave in five years. You look so good. Who does? You do. You and Chaim, you both look good. Chaim I haven't seen except in, in a shadow in a long time. But good to see you, really. Yeah, and, you... and the picture on the wall was perfect. Which way to go on the wall? Yeah, right What's in back of you on the wall? Over there? 
עד השעות. זה המשך. אוקיי, גוד פאר המשך. מצוין. רובק. And my grandfather took the picture, and he had somebody draw it onto a um, needlepoint um, canvas, and then he needlepointed it so carefully that even my sister's gold chain is, with, is in separate color with the gold. He made sure that it was exactly the picture. When you look at it up close, you don't necessarily see that it's a needlepoint. Yeah. 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 Very special. Yeah, that's well, good to be with you. Really yes, important. now that I see that it's so easy to talk to you, to see you, I'll have to look at you. This way, look this way. This way. Up this at the way. camera. No, I thought it was over here. That's to talk. Ah, oh, that's to talk, and then what do I do? <laughs> no, Ima, look up at the camera. Nikki, We're thank you so right. much for enabling me to be part of this. It's just it's very special. Are you kidding? Of course we would. I don't like to take things for granted. Well, okay. <laughs> good to be with you. Have a, a good, safe future. Good health. To everybody, to, to put it... Uh, we should do it a little faster with this business. Right? Hi, who, what are you looking for? Where are you from? Where are you from? I don't well, know. Vera or Anne Stacy? Uh, yes. Hey. Yeah. And it's from Texas. From Texas, from a little town south of Fort Worth. Wow. Thank you for coming here. And honored, honored that uh, to be included. I'm sorry I had the time mixed up, so I've missed most of it. I'm so sorry about that, but I'm glad to uh, be a part of at least the end of it. I think Mike... My, you're a friend of Mike, right? Yeah. Yes, uh-huh. Uh, 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 he's going to have a, uh, oh, what's it called? A I'll transfer. send out the recording. Yeah, and you're going to be able to get it. Good. I'll send out the recording. And, um, you know, uh, I'm hoping, you know, we have many friends in the area. Maybe one of the cowboy churches will show it. <laughs> and I'll, I'll link in and talk. Yeah, all you Jews here, you don't know about cowboy churches. Wow. Cowboy churches are the most cowboy awesome, church. awesome invention of the 21st century. That's a cow. I'll tell you later, Ima. <laughs> oh. Ilan, I'm going to say thank you for helping along, for making this happen yes, so nicely. Thank you. thank you for getting this whole thing on work. <laughs> okay, Ima, love to everybody, and yeah. we'll see you. Bye-bye. Mike, uh, we have to talk. Let me know when you're coming to Texas, okay? Who's okay. coming where, when? Uh, when you're, <laughs> next time you come to Texas, you have to I'm call. not getting on a plane for the next two years. <laughs> so any program that we want to have, and it's even easier because we don't have to play for a plane. We don't have to have Jody pick me up at the airport because she can't do it anymore. We don't have to go up to Amarillo and drive for 15 hours to get to nowhere. We could do it all Texans for Israel in one place. You're absolutely right. This Here. is way easier. I have so room after next week, food. week after, no airplanes, no kosher food, you no have issues. To go we can there together right. every week if you want. <laughs> oh, it'll be well, very nice. All right. So we'll talk we'll talk at the end of this week, okay? Yes, yes. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Thoroughly enjoyed Stay it. Safe. Thank you so much. Stay safe, ma'am. Thank you. Good night. How does this... Good afternoon Good afternoon. I don't know where I am. I don't know what day it is. Yeah, we are I want you to meet Mira. That's a lot of cousin. And my mother here yeah. too, Lynn. Yeah. Oh, hi, Sarah. Good to see you. 
<laughs> even if this way. <laughs> yeah. And it was nice to meet Mike's parents, too. Yep. Yeah, okay. Mara That's and nice. Lynn are cousins from my mom's side of the family. Um, oh, nice, nice. My mom's dad's brother's kids, basically. Except daughter and granddaughter. Rick. No, ah. daughter-in-law and granddaughter. Thank you for <laughs> Yolanda, she knows who Uncle Irv was. Where do you oh. live? That's, Uncle Irv's my dad's side. Uh -huh. And you're in, where are We're, you now? Philadelphia. In the United States. Okay, I know what that is. <laughs> Where it's the afternoon now. I don't know what time is it there now in Israel? 9.30 at night. <laughs> okay. We're having a, a storm out We're having a now. storm. A thunderstorm. <laughs> this is really... I mean, you're having a thunderstorm in Philadelphia right now? We yeah. are. Oh, we're so jealous. Oh. <laughs> you want it? <laughs> We'll take it anytime, any day. We'll give it to you virtually. Thank you. Well, for half and half, you can have the heat and we can get the cold a little bit. <laughs> oh, yeah. Tomorrow we have a very hot day. Very hot day. That's hot. Oh. Yeah. 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 Regards to everyone, to Alana, your family. If they knew and, you uh, would be here, they'd send their love back to. Yeah, um, and the engagement, Susie's, oh, yes. Susie's. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I saw it on Facebook. Yes, the source of all information. <laughs> I know, <laughs> and, such a, and such an inspiring story too, to hear it from the people themselves is really the best way. Yeah. Well, this is mostly for the children, you know. The yeah, yeah. And I think that that's, it was good for the children because they stay here, they stand here, they heard it, they know people are giving it, a, people are saying things and they don't understand. And this is when we did this. Mm -hmm. because understand it more, able in the school, they, they tell, they uh, teach them or they see, they just have it, see, they see it from the, uh, for the, uh, no, from school kids so they started now and they do it in school to the not in school at home they read and it's better for them i think but they're not yeah. in school now now not in school that's right yeah. and i don't know how you felt about it because these are children's things you know that so if yeah. you read it here it's a little i don't know because i didn't know what you did beforehand, I didn't know that Yaffa was going to do something, or that you did, and Yaffa did, and how many of you did anything. <laughs> this whole thing was very nice. Thank you for doing, yeah. for doing this. Yeah. Thank you for including us as well and giving us the link to it so that we could be here and participate. Thank you. Yeah, we really well, appreciate it. Love to all in Philly. Oh, go this way. No oh, yeah, yeah, all in Philly. Yeah. Uh, Mike, you're muted. I just unmuted you. <laughs> I don't know what you have to do. Do I have to do here? There were a whole bunch of people that tried to get in and they couldn't figure it out and I was too busy talking so I couldn't help them. So we might have to do this again sometime. Uh, Helen's mother tried to get in. Cheryl Katz tried to get in. You want to tell me these people wanted to hear it? You didn't a whole do it? bunch of people who wanted to get in. And um, so we'll try to reach out to them and see if they could just talk to you separately at some point. Okay. Do they know that this was, I don't understand yeah. what they, show right. or I'm going to log off. Thank you, Ima, for, for tolerating this. I hope you enjoyed it a little bit. I hope Mike's not in too yeah. much trouble tomorrow for having surprised you. No, no but he made, a mess. he made a mess now. The people were outside and waiting to hear it, and we didn't do anything. <laughs> a lot of people stayed in the waiting room. Uh, okay. How is this left, done? What? You tell them that you can't because there's no room? No, 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 no. no. I have room for a thousand people. That's not the problem. The problem was people have trouble, just like you had trouble with your computer. Not everyone is able to get it all together. 
And uh, we tried to help people who, uh, who we knew were having problems, but not everybody sent us a note. If they sent us a note, we tried to help them get in. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh, Remember, most of your friends are your age. Yes, thank you very much. Yeah. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank Bye-bye. you for coming, Mira. I appreciate it. And we thank you for including Bye. us. Thank you for you. I, I'm very happy that you came. Yeah. And I'm going to kill him. <laughs>